So I recently came across a video that was posted on Facebook and it's originally for TikTok. Surprise, surprise. Now the amount of stupid stuff that I've seen coming out of that you know, social media site. I mean, there was one particular lassie that was, she had a big knife and she was stabbing away and she accidentally went and cut herself around about here. Absolute crazy. Now, I got something like this, which is what you call a Scottish duck. And I got that because the shop was closing down. This is a Scottish duck. Very, very sharp blade. It's what they used behind the barren sort of shield. They used it for weapon, they used it for skinning way. Very, very sharp. This is something you keep on display. People that have no get any common sense seem to think that this is just some sort of wee toy. Start doing that with it and end up cutting yourself. You, you understand the point. People have no even get any common sense. I would like to get a new one of them. Maybe a a wooden one that I could put up and, and hold it, you know, some place. Because this one's a wee bit damaged in terms of the thingy, unfortunately, because it's been sitting around. It's no something you play about with. It's something for display. Obviously value it because it's a Scottish duck. It's something of our heritage, part of our history and what have you. You get all these daft, stupid videos get posted across you know, TikTok, you can see that a number of these people have not na get any common sense whatsoever. So the video that I'm going on about that got posted up on TikTok originally and eventually made its way across to the likes of Facebook is a woman that starts going on about how she works in the HR department and she's having a go at so-called freedom fighters and stuff like that, right? Using the word fighters, whatever. The reason why I've got a problem with that is because I just happen to be someone who does put out the content that I do. I don't put out the content that I do to try and educate people relative to basic economics and economic history for nothing. I do this simply because I understand the damage that socialism has caused, not just within today's economy, but socialism in general. And I've got, you know, a strong argument for my case. I can back that up with, you know, economics. I can back that up. That's personally fine. Now, you know, I've got a free mind. I can speak my mind on those particular things and that subject matter. And of course, I can put out my information. Just like, you know, somebody that's a socialist, they're free to, you know, speak their own mind, although they often really get a leg to stand on. I put out the content that I do to benefit people as a whole. This particular individual is so grudging, is so hateful towards anybody that thinks different for yourself. I'm a recruiter. It's a small, small, small industry. Smaller than you'd think. Same with HR. So, if you're looking for a job, or maybe trying to keep a job, maybe, just maybe, think about what you're putting on social media. So there you have, she's someone that's a recruiter, and there's her patronising tone, and she talks about watch what you put out in social media, well that's true to a certain extent, right? And there she is, putting out that in social media, gaining herself a, a showing up and contradicting herself. She's very patronising her tone, acts childish, and she obviously can't stone anybody that thinks different for herself. Listen to this. Again, freedom fighters. I know you're not really big with stats and, you know, facts aren't your thing. You can see by that facial expression how much it really riles her blood. I'm no somebody in favour of socialism and I do actually fight intellectually and in arguments for the sake of freedom. And she's going on about how, you know, freedom fighters, you know, facts aren't our thing. They're certainly no on her side, I can tell you that. You can see plastered all the planet Earth. It doesn't even matter if you talk about the likes of the Soviet Union, North Korea, Cambodia, Venezuela, everywhere that you look where socialism's been, it has tore the absolute backside out of them, including the Scandinavian economies they love to turn to all the time. And there's even facts there to show for you that they're more capitalist than what the United States and Great Britain are. Of course, they've got low levels of government regulation, strong economic business freedom. Of course, nobody denies they've got the higher tax rates, etc, etc, but they were rolling back in all their socialist policies since the early 90s. Why? You take Sweden, for example. Here's Lotto Moberg, a Swedish economist herself, to tell you that. Hello. What do you really know about the Swedish economy? My name is Lotta Moberg, and I welcome this opportunity to dispel some of the myths about the economic system in my country. Sweden has not always been the country of the welfare state and high tax rates. My country became rich many decades ago when we embraced the principles of the free market. 
The golden age of economic growth in Sweden began around 1870 and lasted about 100 years. During that period, real per capita income rose sevenfold, giving Swedes the fourth highest per capita income in the world by 1970. How did we become rich? Sweden had robust and secure property rights and the rule of law, with a fair and honest court system and a solid private banking system. Trade surged as tariffs and banking regulations declined. Sweden also had a relatively small government for most of that period, with taxes and spending about the same level as the United States. But in the 1970s, things began to go wrong, and the Swedish economy began to lag other rich nations. The government gave subsidies to industries in trouble, instead of letting inefficient companies fail and leave room for new and more productive ones. Taxes were sharply increased. At one point, taking into account all taxes, the marginal tax rate was over 100% for some people. All of the new subsidies and benefits resulted in the public sector consuming an even larger share of national output. The 70s was also the decade of new regulations on the labor market, with more protection of workers and more obligations for employers toward employees. The Swedish currency, the krona, was devalued several times in an attempt to boost export industries. This is a bit like peeing in your pants. It's first all warm, but will soon turn cold for a long period ahead. A nasty spiral of even higher wage demands from workers was met with currency devaluations in vain attempts to save businesses. The unpredictability in the economy continued in the 80s with devaluations combined with expansive fiscal policies until the country plunged into a crisis in the beginning of the 90s. So you can see there facts on the on her side. When it comes to economics and history, it's all against her, whether you talk about the Great Depression, the Industrial Revolution in general, with the myth of the robber barons, or something today with child labour, or anything today with, you know, the banking crisis. So you understand where I'm coming from. There's plenty of statistics there. There's plenty of facts you could easily post out that contradict the narrative of these people, but they're full of these baseless claims. They're full of it. That's exactly what I meant in my previous video. These are the type of people that love to just make things up as they go along. In other words, they prey on the type of people who don't know any better. They've no got a clue about economics. They haven't got a clue about history. And they prove that every single time. That people like her are very good at making baseless claims with nothing to ever back up what they've actually got to say. It's the arrogance for her, you know, and the hatred to come out against anybody that dares to even think differently for yourself. So in other words, how dare you even have a different view for socialism, especially the very socialism that wiped more than 150 odd million people off the face of the planet Earth, but you know, how dare you even think of freedom? So if you listen to her very carefully again of what she says, and just have a listen of how she says this, especially her patronising tone towards anybody that dares to believe in freedom. These people utterly despise the thought that you even believe in freedom. Because when you look across the planet Earth, and there is a strong correlation between that of prosperity and economic freedom. We've seen that for the likes of Hong Kong. We've seen that for Singapore. We've seen that for Sweden between 1870 to 1960. We've got plenty of evidence to back it. Whereas you see the economies that go in the opposite direction, where people have got you know, barely any freedom them left at all and they end up going you know haywire you see that with the likes of venezuela listen to the way she says it again it's that patronizing hateful tone towards anybody that dares to even think of freedom again freedom fighters i know you're not really big with stats and you know facts aren't your thing so you understand the point that i'm actually addressing here let's go on with some mere of her argument just to listen to what else she's got to say as a recruiter and a patronizing tone. You know, but what I can tell you, what is a fact, is that recruiters talk. And recruiters, like the majority of Canada, don't agree with you. 
So I don't know about Canada in general, whether the majority of folk think like her or believe like she does. Well, if that's the case, then even if that was the case, economics isn't a study about what you want. And it's not a study about feelings. It doesn't care about how you feel. It's a bit like, you know, people with the good intentions about raising the minimum wage. Economics doesn't care less about, you know, what you want. You could have all the good intentions in the world and you can try to argue with the study of economics. You can try to ignore the laws of supply and demand. But every single time that they do that, consequences folly their actions. Do you know what that means? Do you have any guesses? Any guesses what that means? What that means is that if you need a job, you might not get one. If you want to keep a job, you might not get to do that. And you know what else HR is good at? Documentation. So as you can see there, it's a very patronising tone. She's basically saying that if you don't hang like her, then of course you shouldn't have a job, more or less. That kind of reminds me of the Trade Union Congress in history. Well, the Trade Union Congress had blackmailed non-union members and says to them, you know, if you don't, you know, become a union member, then of course you will not find any, you know, work that we're involved with. I mean, that's more or less what they were saying. It's a dictatorial attitude. It really is actually straight out of something like communist Soviet Union or communist China or even that of, you know, Nazi Germany. How dare you even dare to think independently and think differently for us? If you even dare to think differently, then you shouldn't have a job at all. I mean, that, that really is diabolical to say the least. The fine difference between somebody like myself and what my channel's directed towards, I aim to help people like her, believe it or not. I aim to help everybody, including all the socialists. I want a society where the cost of living, living would plummet, you would be able to afford things in everyday life and you would have plentiful opportunity. In other words, I would aim for a free market economy that makes the majority of society better off as a result to lift the living standards of the masses, right? And I, I firmly stand by that point and I fight for everybody. I don't just fight for the sake of, you know, one particular group. That's the fine difference between, you know, people like myself who actually stand by the free market and believe in that economic liberty compared to someone like her who's got this very patronising hateful divisive tone so apparently because you think differently for yourself with that dictatorial attitude that you should, shouldn't even have a job well that's rather quite funny that is because she's working in the bloody private sector as far as I'm concerned so she shouldn't be working in the private sector then as far as I'm concerned I mean that's essentially what it boils down to as someone and this is part of the reason for why I became a photographer for the simple reason being is that I couldn't trust people like that and it's a sad indictment of how things have got the day. Now we were already living in a corporatist system or corporatocracy which is you know economic fascism and sadly there's been elements of political fascism. It falls in line with this whole hinky day with the identity politics. Even when it came to the recent thing he did with the free speech union and PayPal, I was thinking to myself, oh dear god man, they're not going down this road are they? And then there was another one, Squarespace. I've currently got my, you know, portfolio business website on Squarespace and, you know, I think Squarespace is a fantastic website and everything. And it's easy enough for people to create a website and you understand the point that I'm getting at. In terms of for what I heard before, they were targeting certain folk who had conservative viewpoints that thought differently for themselves and apparently they were getting, you know, banned for the website or whatever it is. And it's all down to this cancel culture. This is exactly what you're facing as a result of all this. That's the attitude that you're dealing with and this is part and parcel of the economic reality. I'm going down the road of, of trying to get my own business running. The difference is with someone like me is someone who's aiming towards pet photography. I don't care whether somebody's a communist. I don't even care if they're a fascist. I couldn't care less if they've got different views for myself. I'll still go out my way to do everything for them to provide the photographs that they want at the highest quality. Whereas her divisive attitude is, you know, going down the road of, you know, oh, if you think differently for myself, then of course you should be treated with utter contempt. And that's the reason why of recent, I've actually been working towards getting my own business website, but it's, it's going to obviously have the store added into it and stuff like that, but I'm getting it built for scratch, uh, and obviously I'm getting it built on Hugo. You know what that means? You want to be an a**? We document it. We 
we'll give you a couple tries. Then what do we do? We terminate you. With cause. If we're so lucky. If not, we give you the minimum allowed by law. Either way, best of luck to you. Recruiters are watching. HR is watching. Everywhere. And we hate you. See, that's the difference between people like myself and people like her. Yes, I can argue passionately and I may dislike their views, but I don't particularly hate them. I actually wish better for them and that's why I fight for a free market economy and it's why I hate socialism. Now there's a fine difference between me hating socialism that wiped millions of people off the face of this earth and led people towards totalitarian dictatorship that it can't avoid. I've got my arguments against why socialism can't be democratic and can't be libertarian but there's the difference. You can see the attitude is that she's very patronising and hateful, divisive, that you're being watched. In other words, it's like something that out of Orwellian Nightmare, 1984, which funny enough I was born in 1984, but it's like the Orwellian Nightmare. We hate you so much, and you think we can't do anything, but we can. We have the power. Always remember that. See, this is one thing you can certainly say about socialists is they, they love control. You've seen it in Twitter and this obviously brings me back to the point. The beauty of Elon Musk having freed the, the bird <laughs> for a totalitarian dictatorship. <laughs> and the ones that came out, I think it was like some former engineer and he comes out and he says something about how we're all Nazis because we believe in freedom of speech. Elon Musk has spoken a lot about making the platform more free speech in his own words. What do you make of that? What do you think Twitter will look like? I mean, a free speech is, you know, Nazis saying that, uh, you know, trans women shouldn't, you know, use women's uh, locker rooms, then Awesome, I guess. How do people actually draw to that logical conclusion, folk? How the hell can you be a Nazi and be someone that's in, in, in favour of freedom of speech at the same time? The Nazis were people who sought to destroy all means of freedom of speech. They were burning books. You take, for example, the government took ownership or radio and newspaper and dictated and controlled what people could see and read and even hear or the radio. And if it wasn't that, folk, you had the book by Friedrich A. von Hayek banned in Nazi Germany, banned in the Soviet Union, because they didn't want people freely reading anything that was opposite of their views. I mean, that really is something straight out of Nazi Germany. It's just like that, you know, boy that gets sacked for Twitter and he's going on about something today with freedom of speech and something today with Nazis or that. It's just, it's so pathetic and so silly, folk. Think that they can argue with biology. So if they think they can argue with biology, it should come of no surprise why they thought they could argue with the laws of economics. Doesn't matter if there's a f***ing man at the top of your HR department. It's run by women. And it's run by angry women just like okay. me. I can't watch any more of this. I'm so, so glad I got that oh off my chest. And there you have we all the divisive attitude and stuff like that. And it kind of reminds me of the way things were with the build up to the Scottish independence referendum. And for me, it was never about whether Scotland was part of the union or no. Not important. It was always about economics. That you came across these socialists who would, would come out and say, vote yes or else. Dictatorial attitude. They would call you a Judas, a traitor, and everything under the sun. They would abuse you. They would basically give you death threats and everything, simply for them to even think differently for themselves. And it took me, what, five years to get all of that type of stuff? You know, it took me five years for my feelings to calm and for my feelings to come back relative to my pride in my country, which is actually the very reason why I've actually been studying Gaelic and I'm actually going to do a, a particular video on that as such relative to the my political thoughts. Well, some of you may understand, others might know. I think that the ones that might not understand are people from America and stuff like that. They wouldn't really comprehend, but uh, they've been using it as a political football, and that's something I'll get on to probably next to that. This makes me cringe, folk. And that's the thing, folk. It's just pathetic of our divisive attitude because I know from experience what it was like. Things with ease and my pride would, you know, start to come back and everything simply because of division, and division doesn't help 
help anything. It doesn't bring people together. It just creates problems. Of why things needed to change, like I say, is with Twitter. Elon Musk, folk can think what they want, but the fact that he values the freedom of speech of folk. And of course, people can say actions speak louder than words. I, I understand. And I agree with you in that. Anyway, I don't know what you've got to say. Whether you've got something you want to add in yourself or that. But as I say, folk, you know, I put out the content that I do. I fight for the liberty for what I do. For the sake of everybody, I don't just do it for myself. I seek for that because... I feel it can heal divisions. The fact that she's so divisive towards anybody that thinks differently for herself, that really is something straight out of Nazi Germany, folk. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like the video, share the video, and of course, um, if you've got anything to say, comment in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Cheers for watching.